basically to bring them some time and give them some time to carry out this thorough an exhaustive process for a permanent manager. Frank Lampard will be very much uh, an interim to replace uh, Bruno Salter, who indeed was an interim to replace the outgoing Graham Potter, who was appointed back in September. So it, it's a turbulent time at Chelsea if uh, Frank Lampard is in the dugout at Wolves, and, and that's the expectation at the moment. That's what they're, they're pushing for. Um, then he will be the, the third Chelsea manager in a dugout in the space of a week. Graham Potter overseeing that Aston Villa game, then Bruno Salter for the Liverpool game, uh, a game Frank Lampard took in himself, sitting in Todd Bowley's box. Uh, and what this will do for Chelsea is the idea behind it is not only is it a familiar face coming back, uh, someone who knows the club inside out, just to bring that stability, especially with the Champions League in mind, especially with that Real Madrid uh, double header coming up, uh, but also to give them time to continue talks with, with the other candidates. Just how do you think this appointment will be viewed by Chelsea fans? I think if you give Chelsea fans a choice between Bruno Salter and Frank Lampard, with, with all due respect to Bruno Salter, it would be Lampard for what he achieved here as a player. He is still the club's all-time record goal scorer. And he did have that managerial spell. It didn't end well for him. Of course, he left uh, Stamford Bridge to be replaced uh, by Thomas Tuchel, who went on to win the Champions League. And, uh, and really, Thomas Tuchel has been the most popular recent Chelsea manager. Uh, but Frank Lampard certainly is as someone who knows the club inside out. will try and um, lift this group of players, try and get the togetherness back that's required to uh, bring some results and consistency and momentum, of course, with Frank Lampard Lampard towards the end at Everton, it didn't work out for him either as, as clubs at the bottom of the table were beginning to uh, change managers in the fear of uh, uh, getting relegated from the, the Premier League. He was one of those casualties. It, it didn't really happen for him at Everton towards the end, uh, but it is a, a better fit here at Chelsea, if, if you like, in, in the sense that he he knows what uh, he knows a lot of these players. You, you think back to his first spell in charge when he had to oversee that transfer ban and really did a terrific job in that first season of you know, not having any money to spend but bringing through a lot of the younger players so again that will be interesting to see the impact on the likes of Mason Mount who is in the middle of, a, of contract negotiations with Chelsea other young players such as Rhys James um, and then some of the, the more uh, some of the, the other signings, remember Lampard was in charge when the likes of Hakim Ziyech and Kai Havertz uh, and Edward Mendy came into the club. So, uh, again, he knows many of these players and uh, he is the one that they're hoping will just galvanise things and, and stabilise things until the end of the season. Yeah, there's a fair, a fair bit of football for them to play before the end of the season. 11th in the Premier League, still in the Champions League, though. What are the expectations looking like? You know, what's, what's he going into in terms of what he's got to achieve if he is in their short term? Well, Chelsea will clearly be hoping for some sort of impact, some sort of, I guess you could call it the Roberto Di Matteo factor when uh, Roberto Di Matteo came in as, a, as an interim manager replacing Andre Villas-Boas and against all the odds won the Champions League. If you think back to 2012 and so much went against Chelsea in that campaign, yet there they were. It's that type of competition, isn't it, that anything can happen. So they'll clearly be hoping that similar things can happen, whether you know Chelsea quite clearly have had a poor league season by their standards, they're in the bottom half of the table, they drop below Aston Villa after that defeat uh, at the weekend, so there will be maybe an expectation to, to lift, um, lift the club up the, the league positions as well and try and qualify for Europe, but certainly that it's that Real Madrid doubleheader that will come into sharp focus next week, uh, Frank Lampard will have only this Wolves game, then it's straight into that game against Real Madrid so they'll be clearly hoping for that kind of impact they can they can win the Champions League and, and repeat what Roberto Di Matteo did but they're under no illusions it is a, is it a tough pathway to the final isn't it if they do get past Real Madrid they've then got Bayern Munich or Manchester City in the semi-finals fairly remarkable wouldn't it if he was to uh, take short-term charge and win the Champions League but it being a short-term appointment with that in mind what is the latest on their pursuit for a long-term successor to Graham Potter because there are a lot of names being circulated. I think that that is the key. It is a short-term appointment. I guess 
Frank Lampard, you wouldn't see Frank Lampard taking this job if it was any other club. It's the fact that it is Chelsea and he's, he's coming to help out Chelsea, his club, if you like. Uh, that, the reason he knows he, he is a short-term appointment. And with that in mind, Chelsea are continuing their, uh, this, this thorough and exhaustive process to find a new manager. They have spoken to Julian Nagelsmann and Luis Enrique, uh, and they plan to speak to other candidates as well, including Maurizio Pochettino. So this is um, very much an ongoing process. They want Chelsea to be able to take their time uh, over this Lawrence Stewart and Paul Winston. Stanley uh, taking their time over this process and really avoiding the mistakes that were made uh, in the previous process uh, or the perceived mistakes uh, when you remember Todd Bowley was uh, in acting control and he took uh, a really hands-on approach to that. Well, he, he wants his, his football uh, appointments to really take this on and take their time and get this appointment right. So certainly Nagelsmann and, uh, of course, Luis Enrique, the standout candidates so far, uh, but they are going to speak to others as well and, uh, and hope to find the right appointment.